it's mind pump time. Hey, I got another giveaway for you. That's what we do every single time we drop an episode on this channel, which is exploding, by the way. Take a look. So many people tuning in, listening to this podcast because we're awesome. Anyway, here's the giveaway. If you leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications, and we pick your comment. If we look at your comment and say, you know what? I like this one the best. This is what we're going to send to you. A full box of 30 packs of LMNT electrolyte powder. This one's legit. It's actually high enough in sodium to make a difference. I love taking this when I work out. I get better pumps. I'm not making this up. Look it up yourself. Look up sodium and pumps and muscle growth or sodium and uh, creatine. It's legit. If you don't eat a high processed food diet, low carb diet, or you work out a lot, this stuff is legit. So do those things. Win that free box. Also, uh, we are running a sale this month. Maps hit and the No BS six pack formula, both 50% off. So the half off, go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code July special with no space for the discount. All right. Enjoy this podcast. We just went live with Sal's uh, workout video, and I was really curious to see uh -huh. uh, because the vlogs like do kind of like whatever on the on the on the uh, channel. People yeah. always want to watch, see what we do when we work out. I know, I'm, and uh, we should, of course, right? Know that, but that was like the first time we've done a vlog that's like that. And I know that there's been a little resistance from all of us on that because none of us feel like we're like I don't want to post like a cool guy. <laughs> Right, yeah. like, it's, yeah, you kind of have to do all the cool guy stuff. Yeah. It's but, also anti, like, we're so against, like, the way the fitness industry sells fitness, which is like, look at me, I'm yeah, buffed, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sexy, yeah. and blah, and we're all like, but come it's, on. A, but every it, now and then, we got to let them know. Hey, highlights, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right, that's right. They don't even know, they don't right? Even so, know. You got to no, let them know no, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the, the truth is, though, it just, it just highlights how much it works still because look at the way it's it's taking off right now the comments are flying you didn't even call for comments it's flying right now yeah. and you know one of the number one comments i'm seeing right now is everybody wants to see this guy's workout justin's workout why yeah bro. I, that's interesting to me because yeah. you're a horse what do you mean why well, yeah. I mean, maybe because it's a little different obviously yeah. right sal sal hyped you up pretty good too so you put uh, a lot yeah. of pressure yeah, he's in maybe the video. that was part of it. Yeah, he hyped yeah. you up pretty good like oh justin's so strong <laughs> so everybody's oh, gonna God, be like, really yeah everybody's gonna be i waiting. didn't say that did you watch it yeah yeah but like i didn't make Yo, it all the way through oh yeah he's <laughs> he started <laughs> hey hold on hey, you you like okay the tinglies are happening you can yeah you can only watch sal and a wife i can only watch it so long you guys he's like i this weird boat Sal, this effect on me. A weird yeah. boner. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, no, what I said in the video was because I, I actually talked about both you guys, um, and this is just true, right? So, you know, because Eli's filming it, and so people don't know Eli uh, kind of manages the vlogs and he narrates it. And he was asking me about, you know, my workouts in comparison to you guys. And, and I was just very honest. I said, look, here's a deal. You know, Adam was an IFBB professional. Uh, chasing his aesthetics is going to be, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a game in futility. In other words, I'm not going to achieve his, his, his aesthetics, but it's nice to reach for that, right? Yeah. And then I mentioned you, and I said Justin's different. I said, if you work out with Justin, one of two things will happen, which this is true. Also, either you're going to get hurt or you're going to give up, because <laughs> that's kind of what happens. When okay. you work out. I feel like the I more the that. more jacked he gets, the sweeter he becomes. Yeah. It's, it's all these I was watching. I'm less insecure. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. <laughs> hey, that's true. The, like I don't know. Go back just like ten yeah, videos Sal, ago. Been really nice a lot of lately, jabbing, honest, talking yeah. shit. So like that yeah. when he's feeling amazing, yeah, Adam's so good looking yeah. and fit, and oh, Justin's man. so strong. Just hug him. I'm just yeah. lucky to be here. Yeah. You know? just, I'm trying to just. <laughs> Who is this guy? Just talk you guys out of trouble. No, I know. No, you're fine. Stop working out. No, no, I know what you're doing. He's like setting us up what that is because he feels so good. He's like, I'm going to be nice to these guys and I'm yeah. not going to talk shit. I'm waiting for them to talk shit like, to me. And I'm here really, and I just got to yeah. bring these guys up. Get with out of here. Yeah, it's so <laughs> dumb. No, that's all right. Yeah. No, I mean, actually that would be fun. I'd have fun with that. Like, uh, you know, filming. A, what is a your, what session. is everyone's training look like right now? I know it's been a minute since we did an update yeah, on what. Highlight the, the differences in your workouts. Cause I think that's so, that's such a uh, important thing to talk about because you do things different in the, I mean, Adam and I will, play around with some of the stuff you do and some of the stuff we'll do consistently yeah but you definitely work out uh differently adam and i work out more similar yours is a <laughs> lot say more serious yeah well yeah. No, <laughs> similar. no it's <laughs> adam and i work out more serious than you do <laughs> yeah. it's like it's like if you have your go-to's that you still kind of incorporate even though you've trained or, or you like change your adaptation focus completely yeah. you still kind of pull in some of your favorite 
exercises. I do that a lot with yeah. um, certain things I know, especially for my shoulders that I want to maintain and, and keep function and keep performance high. Uh, I need to keep keep putting rotation in there. And so uh, I do still do uh, Indian club swings. I do mace bell swings. Uh, I do things that are loaded for rotation because uh, I want to maintain that strength. It's, it's just been so beneficial for me yeah. uh, with overhead presses, specifically also bench press, anything where I'm pushing uh, and, and then just having good posture throughout the day too. I've noticed that like I, if I don't incorporate certain unconventional lifts, like my posture sort of gets affected and uh, even all the way down to my hips, like that's one of those things I'm always considering if I'm not doing like a Turkish get up or I'm not doing uh farmer walks or things like that. Like I feel like my body starts to slowly uh, deteriorate on me. Yeah. So. Well, we need to talk about the mace bell swings because a lot of people watching or listening to this have never tried one. And so they see it and it's like, like if you see, so, if you're, if you work out and you see someone squatting two or three times their body weight, everyone's impressed, right? You see someone with a mace bell that weighs 75 pounds. Yeah. And you don't really understand that that's freaking hard. Like, yeah. uh, how heavy is the heaviest one that we have? That you well, the lightest one's 15. 55 pounds, I believe. Yeah, okay, so one. swinging a 55-pound mace bell, it's a long-ass lever. You're mm -hmm. holding the end of it. You're swinging it behind it's your body. It's a big old bell, too, that, that has, like, I mean, plate, well, plate it, 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 it wants to twist your spine in half is what it feels like. I mean, right? what would you say? I mean, uh, Justin, would you... I feel like I would tell somebody that I would start somebody in like Indian clubs before I went oh, to mace. Hundred oh, yeah. percent. I just safer, right? Like to, swinging a mace bell. You're gonna, you're you're gonna, way more control. Make sure you have space, by the way. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. remember that time you were swinging it and Adam had his dog here and it was like running towards. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! You almost I almost flunked. took his head out. I know <laughs> that was scary. Yeah, yeah I feel like ma a mace bell can be a, a lot more dangerous than the Indian clubs, especially if Dude. you've never done it before and or you don't yeah, have great shoulder mobility. I think it requires yeah, it requires more technique. And uh, to learn, um, but yeah, I, I think it's so valuable though. Like, I, I just don't feel like you know what happens is Instagram sort of pollutes a lot of these training methods where you start adding dance moves to them. Oh God! <laughs> and it's like all of a sudden it becomes this thing where everybody's doing all these really super fancy moves that are like unnecessary. Uh, I get so much benefit out of just a three sixty swing, and and because. I can be intentionally focused on just that swing. I can slowly progressively overload, right? I could add more weight uh, to that specific movement and build strength just like any other muscle. Well, don't you, I mean, that's typical fitness industry, right? To bastardize something that's an amazing yep. tool, right? Yep. Like I think your point to the 360 is that really what, or at least what I use it for is to keep great full range of motion strength up. Yes, and one movement, the 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 three sixty swing that you're talking about, uh, does that better than almost anything else. Now, the, what I see a lot is, like you said, is I see people doing these fan reverse lunge with it to a whole, yeah. and I've messed around with that. And when I'm doing it, I just feel silly because I'm like, okay, this isn't really a great leg exercise that I'm doing right now. Ah, I'm getting a little bit you're of just anti learning a routine. Yeah, it's like the the biggest it value your to it. I don't like to. I mean, I guess. You know, I know some of these guys and I, I think they're doing cool stuff and it's like, but it's a totally different genre. Let's put it that way. Like I'm yeah. just focused on the strength part of it and what's benefiting my shoulders. And so that's where I just try to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Just like when you go back in and start lifting, you know, for these compound lifts, you're like, oh yeah, those five lifts. Why did I get away from those five yep. lifts? It's yep. just because you get distracted. Yeah. You know what's, uh, uh, you were talking about how they bastardize uh, exercises. You know what it reminds me of is when they, when you got these fitness influencers doing like leg raises and there's someone there punching them in the ass. <laughs> yeah. They're not a boxer. Yeah. They're not a fighter. Yeah. No. It's just some dude who's lean and he's doing, and then in between there's a guy like slapping his abs. Like, this is how I work out my abs. Yeah. No, that's how you're an idiot. That doesn't yeah. do anything more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know where I feel the mace bell swings the most? I know it's a good for rotation of the shoulders. My core. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, well you, you got to stabilize your spine, otherwise you're going to snap. Right? <laughs> Dude, so, yes. Yeah. And, and the history of it, by the way, uh, it was used heavily by wrestlers uh, back in the day, uh, Indian wrestlers in particular. You know, if you look at the history of yeah. wrestling, India has an incredible lineage. There was one wrestler called the Great Gama, I think his name was. If, if, I hope I'm saying his name right. Maybe Doug could try looking him up. And this guy was like, I mean, he looked like the cartoon wrestler with the mustache. And oh, just, yeah, the curly mustache. I mean, this is before, like, that's forget steroids. This is before protein powders and creatine, right? And this guy was just huge. And I think he had something like 2,000 un matches undefeated. 
Wow. Yes, and he would, and this, and some of the exercises they did. Where there he is, right there. Look what he's holding. A massive. Uh, look dude, at Doug. Push that's a man right there. Click on the the very right picture. That's an Indian dude. Yeah, and he was a beast. I mean, look at that guy. Remember, this is no. They didn't like necessarily lift weights. They did what were called uh, so great gamma G A M A. Um, I'm sure a picture of him will pop up here on the YouTube. He they did what are called Hindu squats, uh -huh. Hindu push ups. They did lots of. Kettlebell swinging. Uh, they did, uh, of course, Indian clubs, and this this guy. What, what was, year is this? Do you have any idea? Uh, good, good, like, good. It was a long time ago, but that's a good question. I want to say it was in the 1800s. Late what do they call that? You know, when a king. Has, 1940s. When was it? 1940s. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it wasn't even as long ago as I thought. Yeah, but anyway, this guy, 2,000 matches or something like that, undefeated, and he was no, just well. He was people. born in 1878. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so he was he was wrestling then in the, in wait, the late eighteen hundreds. Wait, wait, you just said that's in the forties. That would be he's well, seventy I, something years old when he was doing these feats. No, 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 <laughs> no that so, can't be right. No, I I read the something about the nineteen forty seven riots. That doesn't have to do with his birth. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. This, yeah, just a random fact. Scepter. Right <laughs> that's why I'm looking. Eighteen seventy eight. In case, like, in case you're wondering, scepter, there was riots over there at the by, same. By the way, <laughs> the men landed on the moon in nineteen. We're creating our own history here. I love I love reading about old strength athletes oh, because too. they were they were not polluted by social media magazines supplement supplement company yeah, nothing, nothing. Yeah. they and they were these guys were beasts like there's another guy uh he was a judo fighter from japan uh kimura actually the kimura lock in jiu-jitsu yeah was named after this guy oh, wow. this guy was a beast he would throw people with a very basic judo throw uh i think it was a sotogari was it called it's like a, one of the first throws and he would literally knock people out. <laughs> he hit them so hard wow. on the ground. Now, is this a stupid question? When you go through judo or jiu-jitsu, do they actually teach you the history of all the moves? Like when you learn a move in, in, in class? Not really. No, they don't. No, not really. But the Kimura is famous because he, so Helio Gracie, who is the, the founder of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, or some people would say Brazilian <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu, he was this kind of small, skinny guy, and he would do all these fight, uh, these challenges in Brazil. This is how he got jiu-jitsu to be very popular. And his dad learned from a Japanese judo guy. So he learned it, and he would do all these matches. And then he wanted to challenge the Japanese champion, Kimura. And Kimura was undefeated. Nobody could touch him. Kimura sent his student down first because he saw he, had, he saw one look at Helio. That's a move, isn't it? It is. So this is what happened, right? So. Yeah. He sends down, I think the guy's name was Sato. I don't remember. Anyway, he had this, this student, his top student, and he said, if you beat him, then I'll come fight you. And I think because he saw Helio was a skinny kid guy or whatever, so he's right. like, I'm not going to waste my time. Anyway, Helio ends up choking this guy asleep. So Kimura comes and says, all right, I'll fight you. And the fight lasted. I don't know how long. It was a long fight. He threw Helio a bunch of times. Helio did not give up. He couldn't beat him. Finally, he gets him in a Kimura lock, which didn't exist in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And he breaks Helio's arm. Helio refuses to tap. So Kimura afterwards says he's the greatest warrior I've ever fought. And then jujitsu included this, you know, uh, some people call it a figure four lock or it's called a Kimura lock and jujitsu named after. So what Kimura. is it? Remind me what that looks like. I know I've seen it in UFC before. Uh, they'll, they'll take the arm and they'll bend it behind you and you, you grab the wrist, grab your own hand. And so you use leverage to. Oh, where you so kind like of like kind of like you're cranking on it? Yeah. You? So it's two arms on one. So it comes from the behind here Ooh, and uh nice. yeah it'll, it'll snap you nice little snappy snap oh dude i've seen spiral fractures Ooh. in tournament tournaments good times it's disgusting yeah uh. the, the arms yeah, now matter. how many how many of the moves like that have you learned the history do you know a lot of i was a nerd about it so of course i looked <laughs> up nerd about everything is there anything i'm not a nerd about there's a camera lock see on the very right i mean i appreciate bro it's oh, great yeah, okay, for I've podcasting so i mean yeah. it's so it's so yeah. it's so useful it's annoying otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, in real life it's annoying for podcasting it's brilliant yeah that was one of my favorite some damage yeah and the Japanese are huge fans of that uh, of that particular. Oh yeah, that's a nasty. One. But yeah, if you look at Kimura, if you look up a picture of of Kimura, the the Japanese judo guy. Remember, they didn't lift weights either. They did lots of body weight stuff, and in, and they would do body weight stuff with partners. So if someone would jump on their back, they do squats or push right. up. He was jacked. Oh yeah, he was like two hundred and twenty pounds. And he would Doug, I don't throw know, Doug, other people's body weight around all day. Doug, yeah, if you could look up like a uh, Kimura uh, judo champion, or maybe that that'll help, uh, or Kimura judo judoka. Oh yeah, uh, Masa Masahiko. Is that how you say? It? <coughs> okay, look at look at on the very left. Look at the guy's neck. Right. I know. <laughs> wow, <laughs> just thick necks everywhere. Yeah, dude. And, and there's oh, he video. was he was jacked, dude. Bro, again, look at this guy. Can you imagine? Uh, uh, this guy was a beast. And there's videos of him in his 60s, I think, teaching his students. And he's just throwing them.
Like they're nothing. Now, when when did when did like the weight training evolve to help these guys? Like when did we start to figure out like what type of exercises and things that they should be doing in the weight room to get them great? Like at? traditional resistance training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they did body weight. Because it hasn't been that long that that really has moved into it, right? You know, here's the thing. In fact, I talk about this a little bit in the Resistance Training Revolution uh, book. Right? Yeah, how is that going, by the way? Oh, it's going. Oh, great! Oh, yeah. I think we're we're we've hit like ten thousand copies, which isn't bad for a few months oh, release. Wow. All um, right. It's got five star reviews on Amazon. We have great fans, so I, I mean they, they'll go on there. They're very and, vocal, yeah. They've been yeah, awesome dude. With their and the best thing is I'm getting messages from people who never exercised or you know traditionally, and they'll they'll message me and say, "Wow, I, I never thought about doing resistance training to improve my health, and now I'm doing a routine. I feel really good." And so that that's the the most you know. Now, do you? Thing. I mean, I you would know more than me as far as talking to the publisher and the agent and stuff like that. What is what they consider like? Is it a good launch for us? Is is ten, I mean, ten thousand yeah. sounds like a ton of books. Yeah, that's, it's good for the how long it's been released okay. and it, because it's evergreen. It'll probably continue to grow. So, I mean, the goal really was to create a book to get people talking and get me on shows to talk about resistance training. Of course, I, I mean, I know what our desired outcome yeah. was, but I'm just curious to like, you know, they said it's good. I actually have no idea. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know if it's good or bad or what. Yeah. The I mean, it sounds good. I mean, that's yeah. I, that's, yeah. a, that's a lot of books in a short period of yeah. time. And what we tend to notice is it's still just trickling, right? Yeah. It's just happening yep, still. Yep. So. Um, but yeah, back to the resistance training. You know, I think with all sports, it wasn't that long ago. It was like five decades ago, maybe. Mm. So maybe 50 years ago. Yeah, but even then I feel like, so like I remember when UFC was first coming out and remember they were all doing like CrossFit. Yeah. yeah. So it really, it's really evolved just in the last decade, I feel like, where they've started to well, really- Wasn't piece. it Bruce Lee who really started to kind of bring in a lot of the actual training and bodybuilder kind of training? Yeah, but he was so ahead of everybody. Because, yeah, but I mean, at least the thought of it of bringing that into martial arts. Yeah, think about that, right? Bruce Lee was doing body. movies in what, the 60s? Mm -hmm. So who were the top boxers at that time, right? You had like uh, Muhammad Ali, Muhammad George Ali. Foreman. Yeah. They didn't lift weights. Even George Foreman didn't lift weights. He looked like he lifted weights. But yeah, that's true. That's interesting. Boxers were encouraged not to. They yeah. were they told to do road work, calisthenics, bag work. Right, and chopping trees. Yeah, and they were saying if you- I didn't realize they weren't they weren't lifting weights back then. That's no, not even that long ago. They thought it would make them slow. Who was the first boxer then to start to do well, that? Well, uh, Evander Holyfield was- I'm just up with all these like random quizzes. Do you remember how jacked Evander Holyfield yeah. was? Holyfield oh was God. the first guy to popularize it. Right, to make it look like yes. this dude lifts weights. And then of course Tyson, Tyson lifted oh a little bit. Yeah, that guy was yeah. pure muscle. But man, it took a long time. But you know what I love about sports is, and I'm not a big sports guy, obviously, but here's what I like about it. It's objective. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if the team keeps kicking everybody's ass, then at some point you, you you can believe whatever you want, but they're they're winning. So you go, okay, well, I guess lifting weights has got some real value. So maybe it's time to start implementing it. Football was probably the first sport uh, to really do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then later on. Now it's like, uh, can you think of a sport where they don't lift weights? No, but I, I still yeah, I think even that- Even golf, they, they lift weights. Now. I know. I mean, yeah. I think that even it's still evolving though, as far as how they train. It was, I mean, there's still a lot of professional athletes that have terrible coaches and trainers. Yeah. I mean, so it's been it's been popularized enough to know that it's important. Like, hey, lifting weights can definitely benefit whatever your sport is, but I I don't think that it's gotten so popular that every athlete has a a primo coach who's telling them what they should I be doing. I think that's only just now happening. I agree. Yep, you're I right. agree. Like they're just now figuring out they need to really specialize their training uh, programs to, to to cater to these athletes for longevity, but also their their very specific sports needs. Yeah, because it, it, you know it wasn't that that long ago where, again, athletes were encouraged to not lift weights because it would you know, reduce their speed and performance. And uh, now you're starting to see them pay attention. Go back to the 80s, right? Look at the training regimens and diets of some... Some of these guys, literally, there were baseball players that would party all night <laughs> Forget that they had a game. Who's that one pitcher? He dropped a ton of acid because he uh, thought he was yeah. going to party and ended up showing up. I was thinking of Daryl Strawberry, but no, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was like he pitched a no hitter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dwight, uh, Dwight Gooden. I don't. I, don't I think remember. that's who it was. I brought him up before. I, don't I keep forgetting his name, but you know. And then of course you go back even further. Well, that I mean, Babe Ruth. <laughs> what about nutrition? I mean, nutrition is really is, is probably even further behind than the weight training because there's still a lot of athletes that eat Definitely. like crap, and then there's oh, yeah. a handful. I feel, well, not a handful, more than a handful, but there's a small percentage of them that are actually dialed in as Doc far as Ellis. Oh, Doc, Doc Ellis. Ellis. And the game, you can watch the game and you had no idea that this guy's high <laughs> on, acid. on acid and he threw a no-hitter, which is 
Uh, absolutely. What a bold move. I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, dude. he was in the zone, though, you know? Yeah. Like, that's... You know what You know what was... Uh, I did not know, and this is when we talked to, like, top-level uh, sports coaches, right? Mm. Is they say, oftentimes, the reason why you don't mess with diet is because it messes with the athlete psychologically. Mm. So, like, if, if so-and-so player is like, before every game, I drink... Two glasses of Kool Aid and I eat a cheeseburger from oh, McDonald's, right. and it, and I win when I do that. And then you're like, Nah, man, that's not good for you. You know, it's it so super that was um, and ritualistic. Who, yeah. who was the sports psychologist we had on? Uh, McCabe, Brett McCabe. Oh yeah, he that's said who that. talked about that. That's right. I forgot all about that. That's yeah. right. You're right. It's because it's the the return that you get on them eating better is a small enough return that it's not worth messing their head <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, dude. Oh. He's like, no, I eat a double cheeseburger before every game. That's how I win. Nope. Uh, did you? Yeah. Get, did, all right, that's your process. <laughs> did you have anything like that when you played? I mean, I I was very much superstitious. Like I had like specific socks. I had a specific way I put you know my uniform on. Really? Never washed his underwear. Nobody fucking <laughs> talked to me. You know, I was really adamant. Don't talk to me. Like I, I had to hyper focus and be in, in my own world. And, uh, I used to get so mad at, in college specifically because everybody is just yeah, all jokey and jovial before we're about to like basically go to war in my mind. Were you guys taking supplements? Were, was, were supplements popular like in, in your school when you were doing that? Were you, I, that's obviously the nineties. Um, yeah. So there were some guys that were really about it. Like I mentioned, like, was it mini thins? Remember those when they came out? It was like Ephedra. Ephedra and like there was a couple guys that, I mean, this only happened for a few games, but they were experimenting with it. And oh my God, you should have seen the opening kickoff. It was like a bunch of rabid dogs. Just, <laughs> it was, it was crazy. Like have the, you, like I don't recommend it. Have yeah, you, I'm surprised have you, your heart didn't explode. Have you introduced like your high school kids to things like LMNT or it's just like a, so a very basic supplement that I guarantee all of them need? Yeah. So that's, yeah, it's great. Um, I actually did a whole talk yesterday just specifically on nutrition because I was like, that's something that nobody talks about. Uh, I have no idea where these kids are coming from. Like one thing that was interesting to me to think about was a lot of these kids will sleep till noon. Right. And, and so that, and then they're just like, barely even cramming something in before they come to practice. And so they're not even like properly, you know, preparing and eating, uh, you know, to get to practice, which I mean, they're expending so many calories in these workouts uh, because it's not just like in the weight room where I want to implement uh, what I want to do with them, but it's also, they got to go run hundreds and they got to do all this crazy other stuff. And, and they're not even, they don't have the proper energy because they haven't been focused on eating. Correctly. Well, you have to be the, okay, I'll get before we're done here today, make sure you you talk to Jerry, I'll have them send over specifically for your high school team. You'll be a champion. You show up every time to, with the uh, element T perfect and hook all kids, of them up. Yeah, there's kids getting cramps and, you know, there's uh, uh, they're not properly hydrating. So I guarantee that would make a massive difference. I did bring them up. I brought them up and I brought uh, creatine up. Uh, in terms yeah, I'll of have like them house. give you. I'll have them give you extra, yeah. so you can literally bring that every month for the kids, and you can be that that coach who's hooking everybody up. So that'll be cool. Psychologically, yeah, love sure it. that'll have an impact too, because you're a kid. And you're like, oh, that's what I'm saying. Coach I, that's me. what I'm, I'm thinking about. It. Supplements, Here's oh a little performance God. boost, cutting edge, kids. whatever. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, no, it'll be su super cool. That's what I'm saying. You'll be look like a champion yeah. doing that. That, that was the me parents. And it's free. Like, you love free. Who doesn't love free supplements? That's so. Katrina always laughs about this because we we she just did this yesterday. Who was it? She just did. I don't remember who she did this for, but we do this a lot. Like as a thank you to someone that maybe helps us out or comes by the studio. We talk about how much free supplements and stuff we have. She always does this little, uh, oh, it was Vicky. That's who it was. And I, I didn't even tell you guys this. So yesterday, Vicky was in here. She cut my son's hair after after all of us. And uh, she's like, hey, she hasn't asked any one of us this. She asked Katrina. She goes, hey, um, could I buy some mind pump gear? Like I, you know, I, and she's like, no, we'll take care of you and stuff like that. She's like, no, 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 it's okay. And she's like, of course, don't worry about it. What size? And she's getting our stuff. And then she put together like a, you know, she just took all the random supplements that we could send. <laughs> like, that's like the go-to move. Like nice. we got all these supplements that we get given to her and then we give them. She goes, every time I do that, you, you would be surprised like how excited everybody gets. I'm like, I'm not surprised. I said, yeah. I, remember, I know what I was, I we talked that, about, yeah. we talked about this before that <laughs> if I was, 22 year old me trainer and you told me that this future business that we were going to build <laughs> all you gotta do is watch me, Sal at a fitness expo no it oh gave my, me unlimited bag. supplement access <sighs> and like thousands of dollars supplements sent like to me Christmas. for free I would be like oh that's it I wouldn't even care about the salary or how much money I'm like really I'm gonna get that much free supplements know, every month dude. I, <laughs> no, I know super I, excited I mix all kinds of weird things together <laughs> just to see what'll happen if I ever die that's probably what'll, why you know what killed me yeah. Sal mixed four different supplements together. He wasn't supposed to <laughs> mix. No, but psychologically, I remember as a kid, 
when I was 14 or 15, I just started lifting weights and I'm going through my parents, like they had their own supplements, like, and they were vitamins. It wasn't like anything crazy, but I remember going through being like, what can I take before I work out? And my dad had these vitamin C packets that you put in water and it fizz. Yeah. And I thought for sure this, this has is, to do something. Oh, dude! And I would take it and get the best workouts. It was all psychological. <laughs> no, <laughs> just because you got bubbles. Talking yeah. about football, yeah. have you guys, Justin? Have you seen what the COVID restriction rules are for the NFL right now? Have you seen what they're doing? No, I haven't. Uh-huh. Oh, dude, I'm gonna read these to you guys. So I actually Wait, restriction for fans or for the players? For the players. Mm. So this is what they, this is what they're doing. So they tried to encourage the players to get vaccinated, and I think they were so unsuccessful with it. This is this is the rules for this season. I'm gonna read them off because I was so surprised on like. The stuff that we have here. So, if you're a vaccinated player, uh, you will not need to be required to uh, submit a daily COVID 19 test. If you are unvaccinated, you'll have to test daily. Every day. Every day, right? Uh, If you're vaccinated, will not be required to wear a mask at at team facilities or during travel. Obviously, if you're not, then you will have to. Well, uh, you will, if you're vaccinated, you will not need to quarantine after being exposed to COVID 19. If you haven't, we will need a self quarantine following exposure. Uh, for someone who has been vac- vaccinated, no travel restrictions or limits on move uh, on movement. Uh, if you have if you haven't been, will remain under same travel restrictions as of t- as the 2020 season restrictions, which is the whole two weeks before you can see anybody. Wow. Do you remember all that stuff? Uh, they can't. So listen, there's some. Uh, there's a bunch, but I'm going to name some of the ones that I thought were really interesting. Like you can't even use the the cafeteria with your teammates. So they're going to isolate these people that are decided they're not going to get vac- vaccinated. Um, you can't even use social media. So ostracizing them. Here's a weird wait, 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 one. You can't use social media. Over here, lepers. Listen to this. Okay. Vaccinated players, no limits on social media marketing or promotional opportunities. Unvaccinated players not allowed to have social media marketing or promotional opportunities. Why? I know. I thought that was really weird. That's then that, that clearly is just pressure to yes. get vaccinated because that has nothing to do with. Right. You can't. You you're not permitted to use the steam room or sauna. I mean, they're doing a lot of things to just completely isolate this. Dude, group. Remember, remember how I brought up that yeah, dark ho- that dark horse podcast where um, they had that that doctor on who talked about ivermectin and then rogan had uh the two guys what yes. was it was it brett weinstein, weinstein? Yeah. <laughs> you know someone corrected it it's it's is it weinstein or weinstein he pronounces it weinstein weinstein yeah. okay so brett weinstein and then there was this other doctor can't remember his name they talked about ivermectin rogan had an emergency podcast had them on mm-hmm. so i got a message i actually got several messages from doctors in other parts of the world where they have low access to vaccines, and so they've been relying on ivermectin, and they're saying it's tremendously effective. I had one lady message me, I forgot what part of the world she was from, I wanna say Africa, and she was saying, oh yeah, we've had tremendous success using ivermectin to treat. Thailand too, right? Uh, Yeah, Thailand, Africa, I know some areas in Brazil were using it, and they're finding tremendous success. We don't hear about that over here. And then there was also some, uh, now I think the FDA is now yeah. t- investigating. We don't like competitors. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know the FDA is investigating heart inflammation issues for adolescents who are getting the, the vaccine. That's mainstream, by the way. I'm not making that up. So yeah, don't no, demonetize there's, there's us. concerned. Yeah. You too. I know. Interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, I get the whole, I get well, the fear around it. We I don't mean, wanna... yeah, they're a, ma- a major, you know, money machine and they, they want to protect their money machine. Totally. And, and that's really like why they're so crazy about, it, I'm sure, you know, just yeah, because one person on a team gets it COVID, everybody's paycheck. They have to. The team can't compete. They have right. to wait. They have to. You know. I was going to so. ask you guys. So what, I mean, I know how I feel about that. Like, what's your? What's I mean, your, I would be upset as a player, but at the same time, like it's an organization, that's right? And you're getting paid, so it's kind of like, you know, each one of these companies sort of have to set their own standards, right? So yeah. no, I agree. Yeah. So yeah, I, agree. I mean, what are you What are you going to do? It's private yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Plus, those guys. I mean, it's hard to feel bad for. Pro football players make you know millions of dollars. Yeah, well, well that's, I mean that's their job, right? Yeah. And there's most people that have a job. There's parts of their job they don't like, mm-hmm. but you still show up and you work because there's a lot of other things <laughs> that you like yeah. about it. And so that's the way I look at it. It's like oh, that's you're not the one writing the check. You you have the opportunity to work for them and play. And as, even though I'm not a fan of all that stuff like that, I also agree with their their ability to be able to do that. You yeah. Know? Okay. So, let me see if I can stump you guys on this. I have like one little fun fact to throw in here. Oh, cool. Okay? I like, like this. I, I don't know. <laughs> Sal might know this or not, but why is uh, that? Why do you always start like that? Because <laughs> last time, because he's into weird facts. So, like, I know, you, but you, you never bring in the weird like stuff. I'm the dumb guy. Over no, no. <laughs> he's, he's, he's all, you Adam, bring in all Adam, the business. Adam, like, Adam doesn't know anything, so we're just, yeah, that's that's what what I, no economics. That's what it, and, that's what it feels just, like. 
Yeah, no. Okay, you, sorry, don't backpedal. Sports. Sorry. 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 If you know the answer, how shocked right, he'll dude, be. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, Adam feels right. a little bit threatened. Go ahead. Here, so. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so the, the Great Pyramid, okay? How many sides is, is, does the Great Pyramid have? How Four. many sides? Wrong. Oh, damn. No. Eight. Eight? What do you mean? Eight? Has eight? eight so it's an eight-sided? Eight sided, it's eight-sided. So it actually, like, inverts... Uh, from the corners. So mm. there's a point in the middle of each one of the corners. Oh. And they didn't see that until they were, uh, it was some kind of like so it, equinox. So or, it changes as it goes up? Wouldn't that make it a hexagon and not a freaking pyramid? I don't know what that's called, but it's it's definitely eight points to it where we, we always thought it was four, but they didn't notice that until the shadow of the sun hit it at like an equinox or interesting, you know, situation. Yeah, it was crazy. I wonder why aliens made the pyramids. That's what I always think about. Yeah. Like, why would they? <laughs> I mean, make there was a reason. I right? mean, wouldn't that change the definition? It's not technically a pyramid anymore. I mean, how well, is it's that? It's just the base. So I think the pyramid still is oh, so part the- of it, but. Okay, now explain it. Wait, so, like, so there's four points to the base. Correct. Right? So yep. now if you add like little inversions on the sides, it's still a pyramid. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's, it's I feel just, like I feel like we're more confused than before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I know even less now. Yeah. They don't even know. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's where I'm at. Have you now? I know you know this, uh, Justin, because you're in, again you're into again, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you gonna, know that the you know the Sphinx, right? The, the, that's the yeah. that this looks like a big cat looking thing. Yeah. yeah, that it has pretty clear water erosion uh, marks on it. Right. Oh, uh, good to. Prove the flood. Well, just to show, like, and there wasn't water in Egypt for way before the pyramids uh, ever existed. Yeah. And so they think that that think proves older, that even. the Sphinx was there bef- way mm-hmm. before the pyramids were. I mean, how crazy is that? No. You know, it's funny. We have no way of knowing. We have no way of knowing. It's all speculation. The yeah. truth of like all of this. Shit. Well, okay. Then right. at, what's the if the if the great flood was true, right? From for, if you're going from the Bible, when was the time frame of that in, in relation to? Oh, the, I have no idea. Oh, yeah. Know, that's, I, mean, I guess I know that. Yeah, there's no definitive mm-hmm. like date for that. I think it's just because, well, there's a lot of uh, interesting new data out there too that um, you know shows more than likely there was a meteor impact, which then caused like this huge flood and, uh, you know, affected, um, basically in, U- in the United States, you know, the great plains. Yeah. Where like, there wasn't a huge, slow process. Yeah, they think it was a fast sheet process of ice just basically oh. came down and, and carved through yeah, cause, the land. Cause the current theory is like that water slowly eroded and created, you know, the, the grand Canyon. And, and uh, so Graham Hancock says there might be evidence that this was a fast, process that there was this cataclysmic event that created all of these things and we really have no idea yeah randall carlson he's like this geologist but he has like really cool evidence that shows you know from aerial views and and things how when uh, water moves fast how it cuts through the earth differently so you can actually see that on a massive scale of these fingers like you'd see at the end of like a river or whatever. It looks very similar, but on a really massive so scale. Here's the weird thing for me. I, I, you ever seen the pictures of they're like, I don't know what you would, ex- how you would explain them. They're not carvings, but they're definitely uh, big pieces of, I don't know, for lack of a better term, art that you can't even see or notice until you're in the sky in a plane. Have you guys seen these? No. They're, and they're ancient and you can't make them out. Like if you're down on the ground, uh, or around it, you don't know that there's literally a picture of a, an ant or a spider. One of them is a naked dude with an erection. Du- what? <laughs> yes. You yeah. have to look this up now. Yeah, God. Doug, look this. It's literally a dude with a boner. What? And you don't see it unless you're way up in the sky. He's excited for aliens to, to visit. Yeah, so that's those are the Nazca lines. There's yeah. there's one that's a spider. But What's that, what, what is that? I don't know what that is. Those are, you see them from space. No, no, the Nazca lines. What is that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. One of the things. In, uh, yeah, Peru, I believe. Peru. Yeah, in Peru. And you, so, what what is it? What is creating the? Is it someone? Who, I mean, you, you, they just mowed a lawn a certain way. Because no, that's not no, that, they, that's not no. A, they've lasted for that's not, for hundred thousand. That's of not years. very impressive. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, what is it making the lines though? What is the, it? Is the, it mountain the top ridges? Soil is darker, and then when they they carved through it, it it's like it, it uncovers the lighter type of dirt. Yeah. So it just stayed like two thousand years old. Some of these what? that they find. Yeah, I Doug, look that. up the, the 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 worst is the green piece that came down there and actually like destroyed one. I don't know how you find this but it'd be like naked uh, ancient naked man seen from airplane or something like that. <laughs> I, I want you guys to see this he really wants us to see this naked yeah guy. I, I you know yeah. doug is so his search history his, is yeah so his fun. history is so <laughs> yeah nazca lines, naked man naked all right good man i don't know if it was in nazca though it might have been someone else but well, let's, uh, 
Let's but find there's out. that guy. Oh, there, is, that's the guy that's like, hello. Yeah, no, there's literally a dude. Kind of I swear like to God, oh, there's a monkey. Oh, yeah, yeah, right here. There he hey. is right there. Oh, what? Oh, that's, uh, no, that's an English. Uh, how hillside. long has that one been there? Oh, oh boy. Medieval. So it's a medieval. medieval. He's yeah. got a medieval club, carving. you know. What? He's, yeah. No way. That's what it says. It's not prehistoric. It's medieval. But for whatever reason, medieval English people drew a dude with a club <laughs> and a boner. <laughs> <laughs> what? It weirdly makes sense. Yeah. A thousand years old. How old? A thousand I mean, years. He's really into violence. That's a thousand years old. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Now, now because it's a dude with a boner holding a club, do you think it was a bunch of dudes that were like they were they were drunk on mead or something? Yeah. Like, dude, be. you know, it'd be funny. Yeah. If we did a, a massive like. Naked dude, <laughs> painted boat. <laughs> Just you know, tell the imagine the, the yeah. uh, imagine the math required to do that exactly with, without the ability to see something from that high. I'm like imagine that. That's way more difficult than you think. That's what I'm saying. To be that accurate, they couldn't. Yeah. Even, here's the thing. I was expecting crazy. to see some, you know, some lines and like you're like, no, that's, that's better than that's better. Than I can draw on paper. Yeah, you know what? You know what's what's funny about this? Really though, that's it, where all these alien conspiracies come from. Well, like, look you, how you, symmetrical you that guy is. Space. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, think about it. They never saw their own damn painting. How, how are they going to see it? You're in medieval times. You ain't jumping that high. Like, what are you doing? You get, you're kind of guessing, you know? Where are they going to see that from? Yeah. That's from a plane. Man. And is, it's, it's uh, in, in rock or dirt? Or I, I can't penis. tell, Doug, what, it, what is it in that's, that makes it stand out like that? Yeah. Are you less interested in this, Doug? I feel like I'm really interested in this story. Yeah, you are very interested. I, sure. I mean, that's fascinating um, to yeah, me. Yeah, it is. Something that's that Finally, old. Justin, we with, found something that Adam's like freaking we out. We got him. Well, Every that is, that's, up, that's like, I mean, <laughs> something that old, you don't have the ability to to see how, I mean, and it, to be that accurate. Yeah. It's Unless like, it's a big hoax and someone mowed a lawn that way in the no. last, well, then, then yeah. I'm not impressed anymore. Well, some of those crop circle things, they, they've shown how yeah. they've been able to do that, but those can get really geometrically complex. Yeah. And, and so some one of the, of course, funny theories is that they were making that for the aliens. It's because aliens are yeah, in the they're, sky. They're communicating somehow. Yeah. So like, hey, it's like an F you or what? Hey, we got a boner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm ready. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm cock ready. Hey, That's right. Okay. Hey, you look at this. You yeah. got two yeah. options yeah. if you come we're, down. We're producer Earth. kill. One, yeah. <laughs> one or the other. We either fight or we fuck. Come down here, and fuck around, and find out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's that, that guy. That saved us. We don't even realize yeah. this. Yeah. Aliens almost invaded. The yeah. They saw that shit. They're like, hell no. They're horny and violent. We're out of here. We're not going to this planet. We're going to go to Mars. Next planet. That's made out of chalk. Yeah. It's what? Made out of chalk. Chalk yeah. that would chalk. wash away How in the rain? Much- They've repaired it multiple times, apparently, over yeah. the years. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't yeah. make sense. Here goes Adam's... Uh, Adam okay, yeah, super here's... How do they know? It's yeah. been there one time. <laughs> Some kid did that in the 1980s. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's not real. Yeah, yeah. That's how, now I'm starting to think that way. So yeah. Yeah, It's yeah. chalk on the grass, huh? That's kind of weird. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't understand the details of it, but let's just... Uh, it's it's a thousand years old. So yeah, we'll just yeah. I I never I've never seen that before. So that's really interesting. yeah. No, that's interesting yeah, to me. That'd be a fun tattoo, huh? The Put that on your, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. On your arm? Yeah. Hey, what's on your arm? Oh, the yeah. random it's stuff famous. that you guys read, it's, man. I it's tell it's you, medieval. It's super. It's cool. It's cool stuff. Anyway, uh, I want to ask you. I'm going to take a, a left turn here, Adam. Uh, mm. I obviously wasn't in Truckee with you guys when you guys had this. Famous uh, yeah. rib you meal that you made. Out, <laughs> Famous. What's the right? deal? Everybody's like bragging or talking about how amazing it was. Yeah, I mean, Doug, so Doug brought his smoker up. So I was actually really excited. So I did um, uh, Korean short ribs for dinner and a salad. And I forget what else we, we did. Katrina and I did. And that was the original plan. And then when I found out that Doug was bringing his smoker up, I actually have a freezer full of uh, butcher box ribs just over the course of, since I've moved from the other place to this place, I hadn't set up actually my grills. Mm-hmm. So I haven't grilled for a few months at my house. And so our, my freezer is because I, I got everything on auto. So I've got all these ribs. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll bring those if and I'll we'll bring them. But I want to make sure in case Doug didn't show up with his, his grill that I had a dinner plan for all of us and we we're OK. Um, but I'm going to bring him just in case. If he does bring it, then what I'll do is I'll get up early throw them and smoke them all day long and then oh well, that's what you did yeah yeah mm-hmm. so oh, they're bomb dude they were like a six hour smoke so well not technically the whole time smoked right it was smoked for two and a half hours but it's I, cooking for that long yeah oh yeah cook for six hours yeah so and so it just falls off and it's just oh yeah like, i gotta cooking. admit i was a little jealous 
Because they were actually better than my ribs. Oh. Oh. I was wondering why you were asking so many questions. I was asking a lot of questions. Yeah, was asking a lot like, of questions. What did like, you do here, Adam? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't so. know you had that in you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, uh, competitive, isn't he is competitive. Uh, I'm very yeah. competitive when yeah, it comes I was, to this. I was really, you know, it's funny he says that now because he was. He's asking a lot of questions. You're asking a lot of questions for a guy who smokes ribs all the time. Hey, yeah. they were so <laughs> good. I mean, yeah, they yeah. were no, like yeah. super Courtney juicy and I, You know, I actually called an audible a little bit because we couldn't find apple juice where we were at. So I didn't have the apple juice to kind of hydrate it. And you actually saved me with that because I'm like looking in the house. I'm like, what can I hydrate these things with so I don't dry them out too much? And Doug's like, well, you could use beer. And I'm like, oh, that's a great call. We have plenty of Okay, beer. I'll what take some credit. You do. You do. I mean, so because uh, that was my one fear was that they were going to get dried out too much because I didn't have anything to kind of, you know, uh, base them in or rehydrate them mm -hmm. throughout the, the, the smoke. That long of a smoke without having anything to hydrate it with, it could dry it, it out a little bit. Out, yeah. So Doug said the beer, and so, but I didn't want a, a, a really heavy beer taste, so I didn't do a lot, of, just enough to keep it What from kind of beer? Uh, that 808 beer we had in the refrigerator? Is 805? it 808? Is that 805, yeah. 805, 805, sorry. I don't even know my beers, right? So, yeah, whatever. We have all this beer in that refrigerator because people have stayed at our house, and then we just- None keeps, of us drink none beer. None of us drink beer, yeah, really. So it's yeah. like piled up. So oh, that's perfect. So- I use that, and uh, I had this seasoning from from Kinder's that, that I use. I think that's how you pronounce it, right? Is mm -hmm. it how you pronounce Kinders, it? Right? Yeah. Kinder's. Uh, it was a maple. It was a, a like a, a a maple seasoning, but it has things like brown sugar like that in it, which is something I would normally I'd normally use the brown sugar with butter uh, and honey to when I do the foil. So the way it, way it looked is I seasoned it with the Kinder's, uh, smoked for about two two and a half hours at like a two two twenty 220, two twenty five. Uh, after that, I pulled off. When I pulled uh, pulled them off, I wrapped them in foil. Uh, obviously, seasoned, seasoned them again, and then I took some Kerry Kerry Gold butter to kind of uh, melt over the top of it, and then did a little bit of, wow. of the beer, and then I drizzled real lightly honey, sealed them back up uh, in the foil, wow. flipped them upside down so that it's it's kind of marinating and all that, and then cooked them for the next three and a half four hours. You know, the, the, here's the deal with like grass fed meats is that. You know, when you get the grain fed stuff, it's like more palatable. Obviously, it's got more fats. But here's what I will say their ribs are the best ribs. They're yeah. actually, okay, so they're way better than the. Well, the, especially if you cook them for a long time. I like was that. excited about, you know, how well they turned out myself, considering I didn't have all the things I wanted. So I did them again uh, for 4th of July, but I didn't have uh, the butcher box. I had to use uh, the sa uh, one of the Safeway ones. So I had mm -hmm. one butcher box, and the butcher, bo butcher box one were way better. Way better. Yeah. Now, these are pork ribs. Yeah. You, yeah. you know what? Their pork is incredible. Yeah. It is. It's the heritage it is pork. so tasty. Yeah, which, which is interesting to me because being completely transparent, when you eat grass-fed beef in comparison to your, your, your grain-fed beef, I don't like the taste that much better. I mean, it tastes healthy and it's good, but it's not as rich and marbly as, the, as beef that's sure. grain-fed. Right. But with the pork... And, and maybe you can explain to me the difference between the butcher box heritage pork versus what you would get the grocery store because I don't. I, know. I don't know. I don't oh, yeah. really know. So I know either. heritage pork. Do you know, Doug? I don't. Oh, that's all funny. Yeah. Nobody knows. I know it's. No, I really want. I know, know they raise it. It's differently. heritage. They, yeah. they, they, exactly. It sounds yeah. important because yeah. it, it it tastes better. Yes. So it tastes significantly better than the pork, and it's like so. One of the, the tricks about ribs too is. Having the the bone straight and even, so it cooks even because it's such a long cook. It's easy to have, you know, one side cook perfect, and then because this is kind of fattier or it's turned oh, and I it's see. thicker, this will be way different. Because that the, the longer a cook like that, the more discrepancy there is in the meat size and everything from one end to the other. And the bone could really change how perfect the whole rack is. So you want a rack that is like almost identical so that when you pull off in six hours mm -hmm. it's a nice even cook everywhere and actually that butcher box are they're beautiful they're always perfect and the well, hardest thing rack. when you're at the, when you're at the grocery store <laughs> one of the hardest things you you can to do is to find multiple rack racks that look identical what you end up having to do is cutting probably ha a, a good portion off to try and make them look mm. like that you know? butcher box does have a nice rack yeah. <laughs> Ow. hey i hope you're enjoying this podcast Check this out. This is a company we've worked with for a very long time called Brain FM. Now, they have songs and beats and sounds that you listen to that induce different states of consciousness, different states of mind. No joke. I'm not making this up. It works really, really well. We use them all the time. So, like, there's particular sounds that are good for focus. So, put them on when you're studying or learning or reading or doing something creative. There are sounds you can listen to to help you take a better nap or sleep better and much, much more. 
It's truly effective, scientifically proven. Go check them out. Very inexpensive. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 20% off. Head over to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. All right. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Cole Rowe. Does flexing in the mirror have any significant carryover for mind to muscle connection? It sure <laughs> does. Yeah. Yeah. Of Sal course it does, one. Sal. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, you know what's funny? It must. If you look up the studies on isometrics, right? And the value of I isometrics yes. and how it helps you connect to muscle so you can fire it better. Um, and, and, and oftentimes isometrics are done in these studies without any outside uh, forces. So you're just flexing essentially like what a bodybuilder would do on stage. Yeah. And if you look at the the old school bodybuilders, this was actually a part of the routine. I know Arnold would talk about posing for an hour a day, something like that, uh, pre-contest before the show. And he said it would bring out definition um, and, uh, and quality, he said, to his muscles. This there's this 100 has value. So yes, there's definitely an ego portion, right? Where you're flexing for the mirror. <laughs> yeah. But I tell you what, if you know how to hit, here's a good example. If you know how to hit a good back pose where you can activate your lats and flare them and flex them, you're gonna be mu- it's gonna be much easier to feel your lats when you do an exercise like a row. Well, this or a is how down. I teach. If there's not any good solid connection, my muscle connection there in the chest, even like I'll slow it down. And just, you know, sort of pause in that position to squeeze and, and gain that uh, neuromuscular connection because it's, it's so valuable that way because when you slow down uh, and you're able to kind of feel feel your way to, to activation of the muscle, uh, that isometrics are, are beautiful for that. I yeah. always wonder when I was competing if that was like the origin of it, right? Like if somebody actually really had the smarts to know that what he was doing or or she, if it was a girl that was starting to do this first, right? Like if it was, my intention was to fire the CNS, get better connected. That's why I'm flexing in the gym all day long. Or if it was really something that was more self-absorbed, I like the way I look. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I always wondered that. I Now I know that- Chicken or the egg. Huh? We talk about this a lot. We talk about the importance of the central nervous system. We talk about being able to be connected to a muscle. If you can, if you can with no resistance, flex- Every muscle in your body, I guarantee that you can train it better than someone who yes. can't. Th- that's control. Yeah. So yeah. that is a that yeah. is a fact. I yes. Mean, so and there is extreme value there. If you can on command, if I can look at you say, Sal, flex your right pec or squeeze your left lat, if you have the ability yep. to just like that, flex or activate that, I guarantee that you have a much easier time building that muscle inside the gym. Totally. Now yeah. to answer your question, it was the isometrics that came first. So tension based exercises uh, have been around as long as we've known about resistance training, it's been practiced for a very, very long time as a way to improve strength uh, and performance. Later on, bodybuilding included a posing round. So what they actually used to do in these shows is you would come out and do some kind of a feat of strength, Mm -hmm. usually involving gymnastics or some kind of a strong man event. Then there was a second round where you came out. They should bring that back, by the way. Yeah, right. (laughs) Could you imagine these 300-pound bodybuilders doing some kind of Um, gymnastics? Yeah, do something cool. Some Some of them can, though. You're right. Most of those are like, that's genetics, though. Some of them just are flexible. Well, Flex Wheeler, man, he would do, like, he he got my splits on stage. and uh, Tom Platts was known for his incredible... Flexibility, yeah. But anyway, it's it's there's definitely value to it. And what's funny is the bodybuilding poses, the compulsory bodybuilding poses, actually, if you do them right, are excellent at activating pretty much every single muscle. Yeah, yeah. Every single muscle. You have the the front double bicep, the back double bicep, the front lat spread, the back lat, lat you know lat spread. You have the the you know hands around the the neck ab pose, which is actually more of a, a quad pose, most muscular. Like all of the poses that you find in bodybuilding, even the rotating ones, which aren't compulsory, they're excellent for well, connecting. Even to muscle. before bodybuilding, you had Charles Atlas and you had his yeah. whole program that was body weight based, but it was all just isometric flexing. Well, I mean, for yeah. the most part. This so. skill also uh, gives you the ability to change exercises. So you can do an exercise to, to that one person may look at and go like, oh, that's for your traps or, oh, that's for your rear delts. And you can actually change what you're trying to focus on because you have that ability. Totally. Like I, when I go into an exercise, I can take the same exercise and it could be something that was designed for my rhomboids, but I could be using it for my rear delts. Mm. Or, you know, you could be doing something that's like a, a major back exercise, but you're really trying to isolate and focus on the lat. So you can do movements 
that are traditionally for something else, but then work. I mean, just like a, a close grip bench press, right? When you are trying to work the triceps, you can really make that be more tricep than chest and shoulders. But if you don't know how to think about that yep. while you do the movement, it becomes a lot of chest and shoulder still. It's yep. still a chest and shoulder movement because of the, what you're doing. But if you have that ability to contract and flex the tricep on command like that, because you've practiced that, then you can go into a movement that, yeah, it has chest, shoulder, and triceps, and you can make it more triceps like you're trying to do. Yeah, like how about a, 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 a supinated grip chin-up? I can make that a back or a bicep, or a bicep exercise. Right. Yeah. Like big-time bicep, bicep exercise. Focused. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you what. Um, when you look at priming, like we talk about priming all the time, uh, priming really is a much more uh, individualized, advanced, and effective way of just connecting to muscle. Flexing, essentially, is what priming is um, if we were to make it really, really general. So definitely there's a value to flexing. In fact, especially if you have a weak body part, flexing it in between sets um, and at the end of your workout should make a difference. Well, that's all resist. All resistance training is flexion of the muscles with some sort of resistance. Yeah. That's all it is. You are flexing a muscle, and, and that resistance can be weights, like barbell stuff. It could be cables. It could be bands. I mean, that's all resistance training really is, is flexion of the muscle with some sort of resistance. Next question is from Fulvio the Castle. What's the best way to increase core strength and performance? Okay, so since performance was included in this, uh, I'm going to avoid the kind of aesthetic uh, exercises because you could definitely do exercises that develop – the muscles, like a bodybuilder, really get them to look really great. And then there's performance, which means how well does my core perform in right. lots of different movements? I mean, most movements involve the core to some uh, degree. So when we're talking about performance, really it's about stabilization. It's about mm -hmm. keeping the core stable. It's about transferring energy. Can I use my legs and my upper body and have the core transfer that energy very well? Because you'll notice if you run or walk, there's this kind of counter uh, pendulum that happens. Cross-sectioning sort of pattern. Yeah, so I like uh, rotational exercises. I like, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, counter or anti-rotation anti -rotation, yeah. exercises. Stabilization uh, movements where I'm holding and stabilizing explosive you know, medicine ball slams and throws. I mean, those are really going to give you phenomenal uh, core performance in terms of athletics and being able to move. I think you have to break down a little bit more exactly the difference between because strength and, and performance are different goals. So if you just, if you came at me and you said I just want to build strength in my core, the w the training routine would look different than if you came to me and said I want to have performance in my core. Like when I think performance, I think of uh, speed, acceleration, control, stability, explosiveness, rotational strength. All those are that's all performance driven, right? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to have this this stable, strong, explosive, reactive, controlled core. And then if you say, I want to have a strong core, like it's building strength, just like it's building strength in, in quads or biceps or any other muscle. So it's it's a different adaptation. Now there's carryover from each to both of them, right? If you have, if you never trained your core and you get stronger, you're going to have some performance benefits. And you also, if you train for performance benefits, you're going to get some strength benefits from it, but they yeah. are different adaptations we're, we're trying to go after yeah. here. Well, I, I know in terms of performance, a couple exercises just for like sort of a visual that come to mind are like chops, like wood chops or like, you know, upward chops or, you know, like just rotating, you know, across your body with either your hips being in anti-rotational um, stabilized position or rotating with you. So there's there's both of those elements to it where I like to. I like to be able to compartmentalize that. So a lot of times in athletics, you need to be able to have like a nice stable base in order to produce ground forces, but also you need your upper body to be able to rotate, you know, ferociously. Uh, and you'll see that a lot in, you know, in baseball, you'll see that a lot, you know, when, when you're hitting, uh, you know, a baseball or, uh, you know, you're throwing a punch or, you know, how to generate that kind of force from the ground through your legs, you know, be able to anchor your hips and then be able to drive and uh, take that momentum uh, through through your arms. So, so what I'm hearing from both of you guys is that if someone came to you with this specific question that I want core strength and I want performance, it sounds like you both would go, I'm going to focus on performance because I know that I'm going to get some strength from it. Because both the exercises you guys are recommending right now are more performance-based. Yeah, and I, I would say it's strength is very specific. So, okay, I want a stronger core for yeah. what? 
Uh, you just want to like be able for to the do, look of it, or yeah, more yeah. reps uh, with a high resistance exercise like a leg raise or a decline sit up, or just stable in a squat and a deadlift. Yeah, or... um, performance. I tend to think more of sports than you know than like football, <clears throat> baseball, you know, tennis, those types of sports. Um, but yeah, I mean, strength is just it's very specific. Like I can get very strong with a decline sit up with resistance and really activate my core have a good strong stable core but be terrible um, at throwing a ball yeah because there's a lot of technique skill and speed that's involved in that so you, you know it, and this is by the way it's a good uh, attribute i mean it is awesome to train your core like we have the no bs six pack formula which is really an aesthetic based uh and strength based ab and core program really developed to build the abs so they're more visible um, and there's carry over there, but if you want like athletic and sports performance, train your core like an athlete. Well, that's where I would lean you to. Okay. So perfect example, no BS six pack abs, more strength based core stuff in there maps performance, right. more, more. Yeah. Good. yeah, yeah you point. start with the foundation of the strength, right? right? To be able to gain that, uh, control, but really stabilizing the spine. So, you, you know, being able to do that on command is the first step because you need to be able to be anchored and be grounded where you are, right. uh, and be strong in that position, whatever it is. Uh, and then the performance to me is now adding a lot more variables to that right. where things need to rotate, things need to anti-rotate uh, and how you're able to kind of put all that together uh, is performance. Next question is from wife of the tree yogi. Are food intolerances self-induced or not? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question. Yeah, right. Yeah, so more oh, often yeah, than not, I would interesting think. question. Yeah, so I mean, food intolerances, like what causes them? So one thing that might cause them is you have inflammation in the gut, the the junctions between the I guess the cells that line the gut. Because remember, the gut really isn't in your body. So think of it this way. Think of like a donut, right? The hole inside the donut isn't in the donut. It's actually on the outside of the donut. Uh, the donut just surrounds the hole. So when you eat food, it goes through the body. Think of it that way. It's not in your body until it's absorbed. And what allows it to absorb or come into the body are, it's very complicated, but the wall of the gut and the intestines allows things to move through. Well, if it's inflamed, particles can go through when they're not supposed to. And over time, your body might recognize these particles as foreign invaders, develop kind of an immune response. And blingo, blingo, you have an immune <laughs> response to food that you eat all the time. So that's one you know, common popular explanation. You also could have food intolerances because of SIBO, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. You could have a histamine intolerance as a result of it. So now you're eating foods that are high in histamine, like bone broth, for example, which is supposed to be good for your gut, but all of a sudden it's causing right. problems. So I would say probably a lot of it is uh, self-induced. But then there's ones that we just, you know, I, don't, I mean, could you consider, well, what, I, mean, I guess well, like, lactose intolerance. Like being born with allergies. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah, I was going to say, what, yeah, what about things, would you guys subscribe to the idea that like epigenetics are playing a, a huge role here? So let's right. say like. What's expressed. I, I mean, I definitely think there's things where if your family came from the Mediterranean and there's generations and generations of eating certain types of foods, mm -hmm. your body is just, uh, and you've that's been passed down from your dad. It just agrees with a lot of that food. And then when you go outside of that, I, I think that I see, at least in my experience with clients, like when they yeah. go outside of those things that their their families have been eating for generations on generations, I feel like they're, you're more likely to be intolerant to those yeah, I feel foods. like some people are more susceptible to it than others in terms of like having that kind of genetic yeah. predisposition. Like there may be something underlying there, but uh, a lot of times some people like they don't really get to the point where they, they feel the consequences yeah, of the, that. The clearest example of that is lactose intolerance. So if you look at like Northern Europeans. Yeah, right. It's in, in African Americans, it's extremely high too. Right. So no, if you look at Northern Europeans, they have a very high, high tolerance, tolerance for, yeah. for lactose, oh, right? the opposite. Yeah. Is true, and it's because for they've been drinking milk probably for thousands of years, longer than most places, right? As you go further south in Europe, you start to see lactose intolerance go up. Mm -hmm. um, in Africa, you see uh, lots of lactose intolerance, except for certain areas. Yes, yeah, certain actually, tribes that, that drink milk like crazy. Oh, yeah. There's, there's regions of Africa where they have yeah. tremendously good <laughs> lactose tolerance. Uh, so that's a good example of how our genes kind of uh, you know play a role in how we tend to tolerate food. Now, here's the challenge with that, Adam, is especially nowadays and especially in Western countries, very rarely will you find someone whose lineage is so like one area. Like right. my family's all from 
from southern Italy, so it's easy for me to be like, oh, okay, Mediterranean. Right. But most people are like, yeah, my, I have a little bit of, yeah. Yeah. you know, Swedish. I have a little bit of this and a little bit of that in me. And yeah, so I'm then a it's total mutt. So I think you really just kind of test it out for yourself and see how you feel. But that's the clearest one. That's the that's the one that's most studied, where we can see clearly. Oh, people from this area tend to have, you know, twenty percent of them are lactose intolerant, whereas people from here five percent or whatever. Yeah. Next question is from Jack Michael. What are some good high protein or just healthy meal or snack ideas for someone on a college budget? Been yeah. this in a while. You know, there's a myth that if you're if you're on a budget, you can't eat a diet that is conducive for building muscle and being lean. Right. That is totally false. In fact, every college student or person that I've worked with with this challenge, oftentimes when I look at what they're eating, I'm like, you're eating out you know, four times a week or once a day. Like, why don't we try removing yeah. that? And then Starbucks on top of that, which is seven, eight bucks. Yes. You know, it, you know it who's just the, stacks up. Who's the super jacked black dude with the, where's the crazy gold glasses and stuff like that? He did this thing. It's oh, like the prison uh, Collie Muscle? Yeah, 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 that yeah. guy. He did the thing of like top ramen and like chicken thighs. Yeah, like, yeah, Literally, yeah. you could get jacked off of that. Now, I don't think that's the most ideal diet for people, but I, I do think that there is this myth that yeah. eating healthy is so expensive because I think what we do is we, we compare Safeway yeah. to Whole Foods, Whole Foods. Yeah. and yeah. then everyone's just Whole like, Foods "Oh, well, Whole Foods, you spend two, th Well, okay, yeah. yeah, but if there's ways for you to buy buy from farmers markets, there's ways for you to buy in bulk for things like chicken thighs that you can get, and you can have a ground very, meat. Yeah, oh. no, like come on, that's cheap. Yeah, dude, stop buying the aged prime rib. You know, at the at the Whole Foods, like literally bulk ground beef, mm -hmm. rice, frozen vegetables, and like, bone broth. Like, like you have. That right there covers quite a bit. So you could buy bulk ground beef. You could buy bulk chicken thighs or chicken breasts. Canned fish, so tuna fish, is very inexpensive. You could buy rice, which is one of the least expensive foods on the planet. Very easily digestible source of carbohydrates. Potatoes, very inexpensive. Certain fruit, very inexpensive. Frozen vegetables. Frozen vegetables are very easy, very inexpensive. You buy a bag of broccoli uh, that's frozen or a bag of asparagus that's frozen, and there you go. And you actually will save money. You'll actually save money eating this way, and it's healthy, and it's conducive. To I think this question gets asked, too, a lot because of the, the, how much, you know, we promote organic, whole, natural foods. And I think we've talked about this a long time ago. We haven't talked about this in a while, that if we had a um, order of operation here, right, of, yeah. like, what's most important – um, organic food isn't number one, right? So I, I think that that's something to, to be clear about. Like if I had a kid who just absolutely every 10 cents difference makes uh, counts and I'm trying to get him from eating McDonald's and fast food off the 99 cent menu and you want to build muscle yeah. or you want to be fit, uh, you know, regular ground beef that's not organic, that's fine. I would not, and I'm not saying that that's ideal or where I or what I even eat. But if it came down to I've got a choice with this this kid who's broke yeah. that I can't I can't buy. I, if I, he's I, trying to find money under his uh, yeah. you know couch or something, yeah. then yeah, I would do that uh, organic right. food doesn't come above eating balanced good diet. Correct. Balanced good diet is a higher priority, even if it's not organic. Before that, you're so, right. So but you think I will, of it like that. I will say this: nowadays, uh, grass-fed, yeah, organic. Not that bad. The market has grown so much that you actually get pretty good prices. You could look out for good deals. Butcher Box, a company that we work with, uh, great prices for grass-fed type of meats. But yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, literally, buy in bulk ground beef, chicken thighs, chicken breast. Buy in bulk rice. Buy in bulk frozen vegetables, some fruit. You are set. You are good. You have nothing to worry about. And I and you'll actually save money. I yeah. promise you, you'll save money doing it this way. And you'll have a great muscle building, fat burning, you know, healthy uh, type of diet. Look, with that, uh, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free stuff. We got lots of free stuff that we give away to our listeners and our audience. Things like guides on how to burn body fat, build muscle, become a better personal trainer. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I didn't know it was called a growth mindset at the time, but that's exactly what I adopted. This belief that you can become anyone you choose to become with tenacity and, and determination. And I decided that I was going to be a healthy person with healthy habits. That was literally the phrase that was my bedrock. And so when I would ask myself, when I had, you know, faced with decisions or choices, I would ask